Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you and thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Hampton Great House Rum coming to us out of Jamaica. It is bottled at 55% ABV, 110 proof. Retail pricing, I've seen it anywhere from about 90 to 110, somewhere in there. Um, the Hampton itself, you know, has been around for many, many years and it was usually typically done in blending components. Uh, they are very similar, oddly enough, to something how Four Roses, if you're familiar with bourbons, how Four Roses uses two different mash bills, two different you know, grain recipes, in with five different yeasts to create ten different profiles of flavors that they age up. Well, the Hamden's kind of doing the same thing here, except they call them marks, okay? Eight marks. And basically what they're doing is they're trying to ferment and distill to different ester uh, levels and you'll sometimes hear about high ester rums coming out of Jamaica so those typically are very funky rums all right the higher the ester the little more funk that you're gonna get now for this one they use 80% uh, of a low ester basically for them a lower ester count called LFCH and that's 85 to 120 grams per hectoliter of esters 80% of that in this blend and then they use 20% of the C Diamond H mark. And the C Diamond H is one of their really high ones. That's a 1,300 to 1,400 grams per hectoliter. All right? So it's not super funky, but it's got just enough to really kind of let it linger and really balance out everything nicely. All right. So what else do we need to know about them? Uh, we talked about the pricing. We got the ABV. Yeah. I'll go ahead and put all that kind of stuff in the description to explain all the other marks that they have. Um, but the other thing we need to know is that in the rum world, I'll say this, there are two different kind of styles of rum. We'll say it like that. We have what we now consider a pure rum, which is unadulterated, no sugars added. Uh, rums coming from Jamaica, rums coming from Barbados, you know, by law, they don't have any sugars added. Okay. Now, then you have, to me, what I like to call traditional rums. I know it sounds like traditional rums would be the ones that don't have the sweetener, but traditionally, rums were made on sugar-producing islands. And sugar-producing islands had molasses as a, um, you know, basically a leftover ingredient. And so when they were getting the cheap molasses, distilling it, you know, maybe it's not, you know, the greatest tasting, right? So what did they do? What did they have plentiful? They had a lot of sugar refined sugar so they would add a little sugar to it make it more palatable and that's the, how they would be able to sell it and that became the tradition for many many rum islands and countries pretty much around the world now like i said purists really like the unadulterated they want it to just be able to get the sweetener uh, without having to add the sugars just work on your your distillation technique and and your fermentation techniques to bring that through the distillation and they have done a phenomenal job, not only at the Hamden, but, you know, across those countries like Jamaica, again, and Barbados, like I mentioned. So, to me, there's a place for both. I get it. I much prefer when they don't add the sugar. Uh, but, you know, maybe you're after dinner and you're used to doing, um, you know, a port or a sherry or something sweeter. In that case, a sweetened rum can hit that mark, okay? But, all right, here we go. On the nose... The Hamden Great House 2021. I don't believe we did. No, we did get the 2020. We did not get the 2019 and prior. Okay, so if you happen to see the 2020 out there, I'd grab that as well. But here we go 2021 on the nose. Big heavy molasses. Citrus oil, like a orange oil, lemon zest, cherries and plums papaya and pineapple and this is overripe papaya where they start getting a little sour a little funky right good amount of baking spices cinnamon clove anise or anise that's in here i could almost yeah that's almost a fennel to be honest that's in there good amount of Wow, that papaya and pineapple's big. 
there's that really Jamaican pot still rums. Usually come off to me as kind of earthy, kind of smoky. That's in here as well. So for another cross-reference, some, somehow if you're in the single malt world and you think of Lafroy and Isla, right? And the, in the Scotch world, you have the, the space ciders and the, and the sweet uh, sherried single malts and all that. And then you get into the Isla where a lot of them are going to be that big, heavy peat um, note. And for me, when you start getting into Jamaican rums, you're, I'm waiting for that little bit of funk to hit. And this one's in here, but it's just really nice and balanced. It's more about the tropical and the little orchard fruits and the little lime and the orange oil, chocolate, old leather, and a lot of dried floral. That's another thing that's usually typically found in pot still Jamaican rums, this floral component. For me, I get a little bit of straw, a little hay, so it just reminds me a little more of a dried floral element. Okay, let's get to the palette. Medium, just over medium viscosity. Impactful rum. Not super high ABV where it's just, you know, burning you down and that type of thing, no. But it is full of flavor. Just like I described on the nose, comes through right on the palate. Big heavy molasses, brown sugar. And then you immediately start hit with this plum, this cherry. Right, followed immediately by that tropical components, that pineapple, that papaya. That red apple component that I was kind of picking up on the nose is in here, but it's probably a little more baked on the palate and blended well in with the rest of the fruit. Again, the baking spices are in there, cinnamon, clove, a little bit of fennel. That floral component almost merges perfectly with the fruit. But again, I feel like it's a little more dried, even on the palate. Cocoa powder, old leather, lime. Lime zest and that orange oil still kind of sprinkling on. That just brings an added layer of complexity to everything onto the finish. The plums are now souring. The papaya is still running on the back end. So to me, this is a fantastic rum that just really lingers. Are there, Again, are there more powerful rums out there? Yes, there definitely are. Higher ABVs, you know, even more ester counts and all that. But to me... This is a great, great blend. I really enjoy this rum. If you see it on the shelves out there, even if you by chance stumble on the 2020, you should definitely pick that up. I think this should be on everyone's radar. I hope you enjoyed this video review. If you do like content like this and you want to get it two weeks early and ad-free, join me over at patreon.com slash liquorhound. Uh, there you're going to get all that, and you're also going to get a private review library. I'm going to get a lot of buying tips on where to find these things, or maybe some substitutes, some of my favorite substitutes. I'll talk about those on there. Uh, you can message me, and so on. But regardless of platform, I greatly appreciate each and every one of you being here. Keep leaving all those great comments. I'll get to them just as soon as I can. Everyone have a great day, and cheers.